What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Debbie Rao YouTube channel. It is Monday after the college football week, so you know what we like to do. We like to do a little bit of risers and fallers, looking at guys that have done very well that week and Debbie value, college football value. Who are some guys you should be keeping an eye on in terms of the big board, in terms of draft capital, and some of these other younger guys, some sophomores. We're going to talk about one of those that you should be keeping an eye on is maybe that next guy up. So you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe button by the intro is going, and we'll catch you guys on the other side. All right, let's get into it. Had to put our guy Bucky Irving on the on the thumbnail. But like I said, we're going to go over risers and fallers. <clears throat> we always start with risers first, kind of looking at who are some of those performances that we've seen either season long or from just a perspective of last week, who has been doing good that needs to get a little shout out. So we got to start with Devontas Walker, you know, the wide receiver from North Carolina, 6'3", 200. He started the season. He couldn't play. NCAA is just the NCAA. They're stupid. So they didn't allow him to play because of some transfer issues. But now he's played two weeks. Uh, and you see here the season grades there. That's from PFF's advanced stats. So what we're looking at here is his receiving grades at 73.2, which has been really good. No drops. He's pretty much a wide, you know, wide receiver out there. His ADOT is 12.8. And he kind of has eased his way into it this year. He had two games. Against Syracuse, he had six catches, 43 yards, no touchdowns, kind of just getting his feet wet. And then last week against the top 20, five Miami team he came out ready to go six catches 132 yards three touchdowns he averaged 22 yards per reception he was phenomenal for Drake May I think moving forward the undefeated Tar Heels are going to be using Devontae Walker in a lot of fun ways he's a guy to keep an eye on I think from just a standpoint of like an analytical standpoint hey he's only played three seasons he was at Kent State Transfer North Carolina. I think that he he's the he's their prototypical wide receiver. There's a lot of guys like him at 6'3, 200 pound mark. Um, but he moves pretty fluid. He's a pretty fluid wide receiver. I love him with Drake May in that pairing. So you have to give him a shout out. I'm just happy he got the play this year. NCA got out of their own way there. So Devontae Walker is definitely a riser as someone who has been watching him, has been kind of curious to see how he's gonna fit in this offense through the first two weeks. Looks really good. Next guy that we want to talk about is Bucky Urban. Bucky Irving can just play damn football, man. Like, I think that with Devin Achan looking at how good he has, and, and I don't think Bucky is to his level of speed, so I don't want to put him in there. But when you're looking at the numbers, this dude can flat out just ball, right? So by the numbers, 290 yards after contact, he has 31 missed tackles for us. And for a player that's around 5'10", 195, 196, he does a very good job of making guys miss. I think that first step goes, it can get up the field quick, can is very elusive in between the tackles, and he does that really well. You know, 17 explosive runs. You have to like what he does there. And his elusive rating has hung around that 180 to 200 mark because he just makes guys miss. He's able to do those type of things. And his explosive runs is really what sets him apart. Now, I will say the last the reason why we're kind of highlighting him this year, he has 72 uh, carries for 520 yards and five touchdowns. But in the last week against Washington, he didn't see those explosive plays too much. He was just a true 22 carries, 127 yards and touchdown, and he really grinded it out. And it was good to see that. Now, they lost, but it wasn't because of Bucky Irving. You know, I thought that he played very well. I think that he has a run. I think he has a chance to be a top five back in this class when it's all said and done. So Bucky Irving setting himself up for a very, very nice season. You know, I think, you know, after the first couple of games, like Texas Tech, Hawaii, didn't necessarily do too much, didn't have those carries that you like to see. But if he can consistently have those 18 to 25 carries, or the touches, right? So he had 28 touches in this game. And with his receiving upside, we could be talking about Bucky Irvin as being a very, very strong back in this class that has some struggles at the running back position. So shout out Bucky Irvin, even though Oregon lost, he looked like, he looks like a phenomenal running back. And he looks like someone that drafts, you know, circles are going to have to start getting up, you know, notice of and start talking about him maybe being a top five running back of this class. Next guy is a guy that I have loved for two seasons. His name is Jonah Coleman. If you don't know who Jonah Coleman is, go figure it out. 5'9", 225, kid out of Stockton, so shout out California. He is an absolute load of a running back, and he's coming on now. He's coming on strong now. So last year, we got a little taste. He had 372 yards and four touchdowns, uh, but he did sit behind some guys. We didn't necessarily get the run that he needed. This season, though, we're starting to see it come up a little bit more. So by the numbers, he has 325 yards after contact, 22 missed tackles forced, you know, 10 explosive runs, and he has an elusive rating of 181.4. 
which is not bad considering he's 5'9", 225 pounds, right? When you're looking at what he's done this year, I mean, he's really come on since the UTEP game. He had three carries for 71 yards that game. Then Stanford, you know, 12 for 75. Washington, 12 for 44. Against USC, he was dominant, 22 for 143. But who isn't dominant against USC? But against Washington State, in a blowout win of a top 20 program, 11 carries, 70 yards, and three touchdowns. They absolutely destroyed Washington State. Jonah's a big reason why. And when you're looking at Jonah from an NFL perspective, he's going to fit some NFL teams. And, and he's one of those guys that in college, he's not necessarily going to produce too much in college in terms of like fantasy production from a college perspective. So I think that people are going to forget about him a little bit. But from an NFL perspective, this dude's a load. And I think that he could be a fantasy producer. And he's someone to get on your radar. You might not know him from a Debbie perspective just because it's five rounds. It's quick. But Jonah Coleman from Arizona, to me, is a guy that has Debbie upside, has NFL upside, has draft upside. Because I do think he's elusive. He's quick. He's able to kind of move on his feet. I think he can get up and down north and south very well. Um, and he's going to fit a lot of the things that NFL teams like to do right now. And I, th I think he can fit multiple schemes, too. So when you're looking at Jonah from a perspective of of like run, you know, when we're thinking of zone run schemes, gap schemes, just running down the field. Um, really, really a true back here that's pretty special. And he's gonna probably get a little, you know, he'll probably lose a little bit of that that baby weight, that fat that he's got going on. Uh, just like I need to too. And he'll when he gets bulked up and then he really gets going in NFL, man, this kid's gonna be a load. So shout out Jonah, you've really come on a lot, and I wanted to give you guys a props. Next guy here, um, Kyle. Manana, Manana guy, I think is how you say it. I've just looked it up, but I, I think I forgot as I was going through it. But we got to give Kyle some props here. 5'9", 210, kid out of Rutgers. He's looked phenomenal this season. 120 carries, 635 yards, and seven touchdowns. He's been a lot of fun to watch run the football. And I think from a Rutgers perspective, when we think of like Isaiah Pacheco and some of these guys, sometimes it's okay to helmets out. Sometimes it's like, hey, these guys produce NFL guys. Being that he's draft eligible, I think he needs to be on some watch list right now, right? He has 437 yards after contact. He has 45 missed tackles for us, right? One of the best missed tackle force guys in the country, running backs in the country. A 20 explosive runs, though. He's not just an inside-out runner. Like, he can actually kind of get to the outside, and he can burn by guys. Like, he's done that multiple times. Uh, he had a really nice touchdown run against Michigan State. He had 24 carries, 148 yards, and a touchdown against Michigan State. That's something to note, like, when we're looking at his overall profile his elusive rating is fine i don't think he's going to be ever be like a super elusive back but he has enough kind of juice in there um but he kind of reminds me of isaiah pacheco a little bit like i think that his ability he doesn't run as hard he doesn't run like pacheco wants to kill somebody but i do think that you know kyle does have that in him and i think he's someone to know i think when we're talking about risers and we're talking about a running back class like we kind of mentioned that doesn't necessarily have a top guy yet i think kyle's one of those guys that we're just going to talk about i think that he he's in there i want to give him a little love i got to give some ruckers love out there ruckers is playing really really well right now six and two um i think the one area that you'd be a little bit concerned about against two of the better defenses in the big 10 michigan 11 carries 27 yards wisconsin eight carries 16 yards right so he is eating up on some of the weaker teams but from an nfl draft perspective he's someone to kind of know now we have one faller today that we're gonna be talking about um and that is donovan edwards so i've kind of mentioned donovan edwards recently and i'm a michigan fan I'm very concerned about Donovan Edwards right now. I like Donovan Edwards. I thought Donovan Edwards was the best back in Michigan. As a Michigan fan, I thought from last year what he was able to do, you see it on the screen there, only 140 attempts and 991 yards. But he's been awful this season. I mean, when you're looking at the numbers, 60 attempts, 197 yards, that's not good enough. And Donovan Edwards is has not been good. And I think that when we're thinking of him now, I think it's more likely that he comes back for his senior season than or he transfers than he goes to the NFL, right? Maybe that Zach Charbonnet type role. Um, it, maybe he transfers, goes somewhere else. I know there's some, I know he was, I know he's been upset. Listen to the Michigan, you know, message boards and everything that's been going on there in Michigan. I, I don't know what Edwards' profile is going to be going to the NFL, right? I think his pass catching profile, which is his strength, he still has that. 18 catches, 161 yards. But from a running standpoint, he has not looked good in between the tackles. It doesn't even seem like he wants to run in between the tackles. He's lost his explosiveness. Only four explosive runs at this point through seven games. That's concerning. You know, his elusive rating being at 35.8. These are things that just big red flags are going off. And I think Donovan Edwards, from this standpoint, I don't think he's coming out. Like, I think that we're going to see him probably either go somewhere else or maybe come back for his senior season, which might be a good thing. But for someone that had a lot of buzz coming into this year, as maybe the top back in Michigan could possibly be a, you know, a day two pick. 
Edwards has definitely disappointed this season. And I, and it sucks because as a Michigan fan, I want him to do well. And I hope he still runs all over Ohio State this year. But I, that's concerning, right? The De- Donovan Edwards kind of discourse. I think it's concerning right now. And I think it's something to note. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in to the risers and fallers for this week. It's been a fun college football season. We have some fun games coming up this week, and especially the Ohio State Penn State game. We'll be looking at some of those guys, Drew Aller and some of those other guys as we come out. Travion Henderson, maybe we'll have a breakout game. So appreciate you guys. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys later.